Welcome to Make Something with me, David Petruto, and today I'm going to show you how to make this picture frame glue up jig that's going to make your life so much easier. Check it. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. I've been making picture frames for a long time. I've got plenty of videos on the jigs and how to make frames. And in a lot of those videos, I am just taping the corners together with blue painters tape while the glue dries. I have needed this jig for quite a while. It is time we finally make one. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to head to Kencraft to go get some wood. I got this piece of red oak that we're going to use for the jig and this piece of soft maple that we're going to use for making the picture frame later on in the video. You can make the jig out of whatever you want. It can be plywood. It's probably preferred that you use plywood, although it doesn't really matter. As long as it's nice and flat like this, I just want mine to look pretty. It's going to last me for hopefully a long, long time. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this to width. I've marked where all the holes are to be drilled on two pieces and we're going to double this up over at the drill press. You can do this by hand. It's just easier at the drill press. So if you don't have a drill press, go ahead and do it by hand. Run with your brunk. That's the four corner pieces. If you have a fence for your drill press, that would be even easier. So now that we have these four pieces done, we need to make the two connecting pieces that go right here. And I'm just gonna use the same material, basically the same thing, cross cut it, drill some holes. So now that we got those two pieces done, we got four more pieces to make. The little corner brackets that are gonna go on each one of these posts here. Once again, we're gonna cut it out of the same material. All right. So now we're going to take these four pieces and go drill out a couple more holes at the drill press. For these four little bracket corner pieces, we need to make the Pac-Man mouth on here in the hole that's closest to the edge. And the easiest way to do that is just take one of the other blocks and we just have that point somewhere in that circle there and this doesn't have to be perfect but if you're weird like me it does and we'll do that with all four pieces and then cut that out on the bandsaw so this isn't necessary but i'm going to take off the corners on all of these pieces so if you can find something the width of your board you just set that on there and do one of these numbers and then we'll cut that out over at the bandsaw again not necessary you could even freehand it if you wanted to on the little corner bracket pieces, we're just doing the one side since the other side is going to be the Pac-Man mouth. So now I have a round over bit in my router table and I'm just going to round over all of the edges. You don't need a router table to do this. You could do it with a handheld router, a little palm router and round over all the edges it just gets rid of that harsh edge there's not once again not even necessary woodworkers love overkill now that we did the unnecessary routing and sanding it's time to assemble it um, one of the rare projects that i make that doesn't involve glue so just some carriage bolts and the bottom here. And then these two pieces go on there like this. And then we got some wing nuts. And then these little guys, the Pac-Man, you go the same amount of holes out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you just pin that in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you just pin that in there and then these can spin freely. But now we need a picture frame to go in here. Let's make this interesting. You ready, Dan? Here we go. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
While we are still in spaceship mode, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. My website, makesomething.com, is a Squarespace site. My podcast, makingapodcast.com, is a Squarespace site. And my go-kart racing league, idiotsracing.com, is a Squarespace site. All of my sites are Squarespace sites because it is so easy to use and it's so easy to update. They have beautiful templates to get you started. You don't need to know a thing about code, the back end, or any of that crap. I used to be a web developer and I am so glad that I don't have to deal with that anymore. If you have things to sell, Squarespace makes e-commerce really easy. I sell both physical and digital items. All my sites are Squarespace sites and I was using them even before they were a sponsor. So go to squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Yes, they even host domains. Thanks to Squarespace for allowing me to do this. Thanks to you guys for allowing me to be weird. Let's get back to the picture frame jig and let's, let's turn the lights back on. That was fun. We've cut all our pieces for a couple of frames. This is ready to go. These little corner pieces here, they just have the carriage bolts in there and drops right in. They don't have to be fastened in any way. These don't have to be tight. They're just there to kind of hold it all together. This is ready to go. We could use it right now, but before I use it, I want to wax it down because I don't want any glue squeeze out to drip onto this and then glue my frame to my shiny new jig. Also, I realized because the carriage bolts are sticking out of the bottom there, that this doesn't lay flat. And I think I'm gonna have a lot more success if I countersink these holes so these bolts sit below the surface and then this assembly will sit flat against the bench. Let's test this guy out. These guys got the wing nuts on there. Like I said, doesn't need to be tight. You can even use, what are these called? Cap nuts? That would work as well. Doesn't really matter, just as long as we got some, some movement in there. And then these little corner pieces, they're just going to pop in the holes and just pin themselves in there. So I need to have them all in the same spacing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Nine, 10, 11. The short sides go on these two pieces here. And then the long sides are going to go down here. And then we can put our clamp on here and this will self square. I've been needing this for a long time. Even though I waxed everything, I'm still gonna put some wax paper underneath just in case we can throw in our frame. Again, the short sides here, and then we'll put a little bit of pressure with the clamp. Good, everything is sitting flat against the bench. I'm gonna tighten this up. Cool, so we will let that sit and dry. It is the next day. I've got my artwork mounted. This is my sign off that I say in every video. And then this is my fraction to decimal to millimeter chart. I sell both of these posters on my website. So go check that out if you are interested. I went ahead and made a second one so I can batch out more picture frames in the future, possibly as Christmas gifts. I have plans for these available on my website. So the one thing that I did uh, upgrade was this is this cheap squeeze clamp that I've had since the beginning of woodworking and I've upgraded to this higher end brand and I could get a lot more pressure on the jig and this one's just easier to use and easier to unlock. I'm not saying you need to get this brand or any brand. I'm just saying I feel like I'm going to have more success with this. So just something to keep in mind. Also, we just shot a video for our picture frame making sled. Yes, I made that video five years ago, but we made some upgrades to that. 
and I wanted to share that with you. I needed a better sled. There'll be a link to that video down below as well as a new video for my spline jig. We got three picture frame videos in a row back to back to back to back. As woodworkers, we're gonna make picture frames. I like making picture frames and I really haven't gotten too fancy with my picture frames and that is something I want to do later on in the year. Like these are these are really, really simple. These are quick and easy to make, but we, we need to work with various species and get some cool router profiles in there. So yeah, we're gonna do that. And these three jigs are gonna come in handy. That's gonna wrap it up. I've, I've, I've talked enough. It is time to get off of YouTube and go make something. Thank you to KenCraft for supplying the maple and the red oak for this jig. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.